back. Moving back to our budget work session. We finished the uh, all the tabs in the uh, book the other day, so we shouldn't be changing too much. Can't hear me. But anyway, um, what I'd ask the county manager to do is, and this staff over here to do is to compile the decisions that we made the other day and put it on paper so we can take a look at it. So, having said that, Mr. Wood, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. Uh, if you go to the second page of the list, uh, that has the ones you've already voted on. I thought we'd just start by going back over those real quick, make sure everybody's comfortable with those, and then we'll go to the ones where you talked about them, but we haven't made any decisions yet. So, voted on by Board of Commissioners. Everybody on that page? We've got the long-term recovery was removed from the budget, so that's minus 15. Uh, professional services, Jim Hennett, that was removed from the budget, 3,000. DSS, 11 new positions added to the budget. And just to refresh everybody's memory, uh, what we're going to do on those seven uh, caseworkers is we will fund those through uh, the Contra account on lap salaries. So really what you'll have is about four, the four that you're adding, which are those two fraud investigators and the two supervisors. Have, have we got a total on what that would be? Well, the total that it saved us from was the total that it cost us was $59,626. On DSF? On DSF, because $587,000 was revenue came in for the state. And then we upped the lap salary by $85,000. So the difference was $59,000. So that added $59,000. Okay. And that's that's for those four positions, right? right. That's our right. head on the four. Fifty nine thousand, Janice. And and it was the and the difference in what we didn't get from the state. Right. All right. So that's a plus fifty nine there, right? Mm -hmm. It increases our transfer to them. Right. Okay. Animal control trailer that was removed from the budget. Uh, animal control vehicle that was removed from the budget. The wood chipper for Wayne Community College was removed, and the sign for Wayne Community College was removed. Uh, Wayne Net, uh, the one new position was added, and that was the administrative assistant. So, and the cost of that was well, that's in the budget. That is in. The it was in the budget. Oh, okay. So you were just you were just approving that. So there's no that doesn't add right. anything. Oh, okay. All right. Good. So that's basically what we had down listed as what you had already made decisions on. So uh, what we tried to do now is list on the front page and on a couple lines on the back page, or one line on the back page is um, anything you had raised a question about. Now, I think a number of these have been addressed. But I didn't have a yes, question. Sir. Uh, on the truck for the uh, animal control, yeah. I think it was pretty unanimous that we felt like that a F-250 four-wheel drive four-door truck was was kind of out of the question. But my question is, is that still going to put them a vehicle short? Um, I mean, or, I mean, I don't want to short that department of vehicle when we could put in a lesser vehicle. Well, he needed to replace it, so I guess we probably do need to look at a 150. I mean, I, I mean, I don't, right. I don't want to beat them up no worse than. I mean, I, I just, right. I'm still 100 percent against a, a F-250 four door truck. Okay. But, but I don't want to short, short change that department a vehicle there. Right. How many miles in the condition of the truck that they're currently using? Is. You know, so I, don't, I do not recall what the mileage is on it. It does have some miles on it. Um, what they were looking at was, um, and I don't know where the 254 cab come into place. I was looking more at a 150 crew cab, give them a little bit more room in the back for the catch code of weapons and things that they have to carry out. They don't need a, they don't need a four wheel truck. Well, do you think we need to, re to replace the truck yet, or could we go another year? I'll 
be more than glad to get that information for you Please and do. bring it back to you. Yeah. 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 Well, why don't we hold off? Because huh? Craig reminded we may have a truck coming from Goldsboro, depending on what we work out. Thank you. Let's hold off, and then if we find we do need it, we'll come back. Okay. All right. So let's just leave it out for now. Okay. How do you want to do this, Mr. Chairman? You just want to go down the list? I guess so. I mean, I. We, okay. really, we well, talked about all this already, but well, the detention center overtime and extra help was everybody comfortable with what Fain and the sheriff talked about there? And then the 261 items were itemized, and they went over the dishwasher and the live scan. Yeah. Everybody good with those? Uh, E911 radio replacements. I think what we uh, talked about was that we would take that up to um, have the contract for maintenance and repairs on those radios. Right. I think that was the issue. And I asked Mel to get us the cost difference between what I put in the budget and what a, um, what that contract would have been. So, Mel, do you have those I do. numbers? I think what we had put in the budget was $60,000. That's right. Uh, and then looking at what the, the contracts would be, the radio service agreement was 55560 That's for all county, uh, county of Wayne radios. That would be your EMS, your solid waste, your Wayne net, OES. Um, those would be sheriff's office. Those are the county of Wayne portables and mobiles and control heads. Um, and that's 55560 would be that yearly cost. And then for the paging maintenance agreement was twenty five thousand. So it's a total of um, eighty thousand five sixty. So a difference of twenty thousand five sixty. All right, and that would also give you the maintenance agreement on the pagers. So I think that's what we had talked about. We would try to do that. So what was what was it? Twenty thousand. Uh, twenty thousand five sixty. So that would be an add on if everybody's comfortable with that. And and also, correct me if I'm wrong on this, Mayor. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Thank yes. You. Uh, my understanding is that the volunteer fire departments can piggyback under this possibly and, and, and have some savings that they can probably piggyback under our, not be on our contract, but get the same rates that our contract is and, and possibly save some money. I, am I, did I mislead? No, am I, right. if, if we keep it separate where the county of Wayne has a maintenance contract, then we can offer to the volunteer fire departments on a voluntary basis if you want to um, kind of piggyback under our contract it'd be a separate contract but they'll get the same <coughs> rates. The same rate. So, yeah. so in, in the long run it, it is going to save the, the citizens and taxpayers probably some money. I mean it, it's, it's one of them hidden figures that you can't you right. can't put a figure on. Right. Well just to give you an example the, the flat repair rate when we send a portable or a mobile or control head off and send it to Harris. The flat rate is anywhere from $695 to $950. That's just for one radio to go to Harris. And we send them regular. And that's if they can't fix it here, right? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. And there are some things on these radios that they're not allowed to touch. They yeah. have to send them. Okay. If we, excuse me, sir. Can we go back to the, to the maintenance agreement on the pagers? Yes, sir. Did the I understand that to be $20,000 a year? $25,000. $25,000 a year. Yeah. Who has these pagers? It's the, no, no, this is the paging system. Well, the these are the, yeah, is this, is the main, this is the main fire transmitter at the Goldsboro site. It's the backup transmitter for fire at Waynesboro House. And then it's the five transmitter sites we have on the simulcast system for the EMS system. Who has the pagers? All the volunteer fire departments have the pagers and then our EMS. And that's what Wayne's talking about they could add, but our EMS also has. So it's actually not on the pagers, it's on the system. It's on the system. It's, the yeah, the paging maintenance is on the transmitters, yeah. except because remember, if the transmitter goes down, there's no way for us to notify the fire departments. So yeah. we need, what that includes is a 24-7, 365 response uh, <clears throat> for the fire main and backup transmitter, four to five site simulcast EMS system, uh, 
But we have not had a maintenance agreement on that before. Is that we, right? We had not, and we found that that out about two months ago when the fire main page and transmitter went down, and we could not dispatch fire departments. Okay, Mr. Chairman, while negotiating out the contracts with all the tasks you want to assign to it, so we can we get out in front out with the fire departments too, and go ahead and maybe try to incorporate them into a plan and look at uh, different funding angles by yeah. possibly out there yeah. and whoever i think it'd be wise to go ahead and do that up front right i did look at some options on that and did talk and um we possibly could maybe save a little more money if we go that route yeah i mean and you know i mean it's you could require it you give them eighteen hundred dollars a year each fire fire department and you might want to earmark that or I mean, some portion of that I, I feel like whatever whatever we do for them they need to pay their own bill i mean i, I right. mean we want to help get it at the, the cost as low as we can but i, I feel like you know like they, you need said, they, get, they need they need to pay the bill i mean i think that am i not right yeah i think the appropriation <coughs> would be a good start see if we could negotiate something look at that 1800 yeah. that we give them we give each one of them $1,800 a year. What I'm suggesting is we would use, uh, use that existing money, not add to it, but just use that existing money. But it's a good okay. idea. I'm sorry. All right. That's a good idea. It is. And, and one of the reasons why it is a good idea is part of this maintenance plan is every mobile, every portable, is, they're all computers. It's just a little computer, and they have to, every year with this contract, this agreement, they will align, tune them, and any software firmware upgrades. The reason that's so important on the fire department side is so we're not kind of, like we say in animal world, chasing our tails, because if their radios start degrading out and it's not working, they're gonna think it's the system. And so we're sending people out, paying them to go see what's wrong with the system, when in fact it could be the, the, the uh, user's uh, mobiles and portables. So it is, it is very important. In the animal world? Yeah, chasing the tails, mm. yes sir, in the animal world. <laughs> Okay, uh, next thing you had asked to see the amortization schedule for the lease versus purchase of towers. Uh, Mel had prepared this, and I wanted y'all to see this. Um, this is what, I want to be clear, this is not what it would take to buy them. This is what we're currently paying. So what, what we're saying is the contracts have a 5% yearly increase in them. So you can see what we're paying now for both is about 18619 So basically over the course of 25 years, you would pay almost $900,000. And um, if you remember, one of them was, uh, I think, 300 something thousand in the CIP and the other was 1.1 million. So um, I think for now, you might just want to wait uh, because they're pretty low prices now, but when they start getting up more, you may want to look at that. Now, I do know they have concerns about some coverage up in Fremont. We talked about that. Brian talked about that with you about and having, instead of having one, they want to have two up there. Remember that? So, but I did not budget for either one of those towers in the current, in the coming year. So right now, there's nothing in the budget except to make these payments which is to stay on those towers. I'm curious, at Fremont Tower, and if it's owned by U.S. Cellular, why don't they have maintenance on that thing? I understand it's in really bad shape. They should. They should. We've sent a letter to them telling them that we're not, we, our tower climbers will not climb it anymore until they do some repairs. Well, that ought to open their eyes. Yeah, for their own people. Anyway, that's where it's at. Y'all wanted to have that information. Wait a minute. We got a tower that we're renting. We're going to end up paying almost a half million dollars over the next 25 years. But our guys can't climb the tower or do any repairs. Well, it's a safety issue right now because they haven't done what they should do. And that's why we've put them on notice they need to get it fixed. And the cost of building a tower to replace of our own was how much? Well, the problem in Fremont is it's 1.1 million because it's two towers. In Fremont? Well, that's where well, we're let's, let's say the northern end of the county. Yeah. Okay, well, <coughs> well, which one are we having the safety issue with? That's Fremont. 
Of course. Yes. yes. So, <laughs> you know. so yeah, uh, Fremont, we've got one tower site in Fremont that we use. We co-locate with U.S. Sailor that you saw. Um, the last time that they went to climb the tower, they went up and they found some issues. Um, the, the climbers come back down and said they're not going to be able to climb it until um, some repairs are done. So our company, RCC, sent me a letter and I forwarded that to U.S. Sailor, put them on notice that um, something needs to be done with the tower site because we're not able to climb it until those, those, are, those issues are solved. The reason why it's 1.1 million is if we, if we want to get the coverage we need, you'll have to put two tower sites. We can reuse the equipment for one tower site. That's the tower. The tower is the same cost for both sides. If but well, that really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. If you've got one tower site now and you're leasing it, uh, and we're going to go back and build one, but you're saying no, if you build, you got to have two to get the the coverage we need right now. We would need to put two out there to get the most coverage. So you're telling me right now you don't have coverage. We have we have coverage up there, but it can be better. I guess, I guess what we need. That's part of why I didn't. What I would like to do. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense to me. Is that you know, if you if you only got one tower now right. that you're renting, and we're proposing to go back and building our own, but you're saying no, you need to build two if, and spend 1.1 million dollars. Uh, if if we're going to build one, I would say we need to go ahead and build two so we can optimize the coverage. Well, of, why don't you try to find some way to make it work with one, since we only have one now? <laughs> We can. We would surely look at that. It might be a larger, taller tower that well, costs a lot more money and FAA rules. And but we would definitely look for that, Commissioner Daughter, and give you some options. On that. Yeah, let's have let's have our definitely. Well, you're killing the deal because of the 1.1 million dollars. Well, the 1.1 million is because on the second tower site you got to buy well, all the radio. Well, just one tower site. <laughs> we would definitely take a look at that and get you some numbers for that. Now, on the Seven Springs Tower, and I'm not recommending you do it this year, but if you look at the numbers, you know, over a 25-year period, you'd pay 435 But if you did a 20-year payment on it, you know, you would take off five years of that, it's probably about a break-even on that, at least. Um, and the estimated cost of that tower in Seven was Springs? 380-something, yeah, if it's, I remember It's right. shy of 400000 Yeah, that's what I thought. But anyway, I would just put both of them off a year, give you time to study them a little bit more, and then come back and look at them. Because there's no issues with the uh, Seven Springs one, is it? It's just cost. At this time, there's no, no issues with Seven Springs. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, next thing, this says breakdown of how the 18,000 Provider Association is spent. This says I have that information. I'm not aware that I have that information. Did y'all did y'all get that? Brian? No. He did. How we're spending the eighteen thousand? Uh, when we take a break, I'll try to find it. I'll, okay, thank you. Okay, the next thing is uh, animal control itemized list. Um, and dues and subscriptions, were there any problems with those after they explained them? Was everybody okay with that? I think we the service contract, that was 4000 on the incinerator. I think he explained that, why we need that. Storage billing for cooperative extension. Okay, this is the 94000 I talked to Kendall. He's saying he put in about 50000 for the building. But he's put in about forty thousand for the site work because remember we had to go in there and just clear out woods and everything. So he's got to grub it, he's got to grade it, and all that. And then some part of that forty thousand is also we've got to bring in a short road, basically from where the I don't know if that back road's even named, but whatever the back road is for the college, from there into the storage building. But Kendall did give us the numbers on that. And We're going to strongly encourage Ken to have it done for eighty-three thousand. Yes, correct? and and that was and that brings up a good point. <laughs> That's the eighty-three thousand that we just got word is in the state budget. I have to confess, I don't know how we got it because I didn't request it unless one of y'all did. But that was the call I got. So my recommendation was let's spend let's put that towards yeah. this. 
Yeah. Everybody else takes credit for it, I would. There you go. <laughs> You wanted it as a supplement to Commissioner Sarah, did <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so that's the storage building. Uh, yeah, would y'all vote on that one, the 83000 because we did send the letter in? I'll make a motion. A motion before any discussion. What, well, what were we voting on? 83000 that we, we didn't know. We, that we didn't know we were getting stated. Oh, oh, I thought we were cutting. <laughs> well, actually, there we are because what's happening is you're getting eighty-three thousand dollars of money. We didn't. That is that. correct. Yeah. So, so we that, are cutting. There's another way of looking at it. So that's. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Joe, will you vote for that eighty-three? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think, I'm sorry, deduct eighty-three thousand because it's a, it's a deduct yeah. from our overall need. All right, number of employees. Get satisfied on that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Discussion on Wayne. That's a duper. That was the good. Each title, my name to school that reduce. And I think that was the. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So we've already okay. Software. Everybody remember that was software that Alation on bought it. A year. This is the ongoing man. Okay. Okay. Uh, Got that line for Ceridian. <laughs> Equipment shell. Was that a saving? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. D I think that was where that that is where we're there quit is. And um yeah, it's just a side or two, but it's that's for the dive team, I think he dive team eleven. Jail professional service media gave us we didn't like the answer going up. And we're gonna rebid that yeah. is. Yeah. That's right. Misdemeanant program um Next day we got 20 inmates. He did. I think today. <laughs> and we budgeted up 30. We're made. Don't tell him that. <laughs> okay. All right. This is information. Fire. Come is 31. 18 going in. Shows how they've spent it. With how there's this is a good one up. Okay. I just want to see everybody good. Let's see. The association for you to try. Uh, help me out here again. Uh, we came on one and, and we didn't expense. They're having to, they're having to take care of their own. Take care of their own now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <coughs> let's see. Library, I think. She explained the non-capital computer needs, the extra help, and the overtime. The main thing there was the audio-visual equipment. Yeah. And I did get a breakdown from um, uh, Ryan Preble, and that's where she got it. It is legitimate. And I think we went over it yesterday. Yes. I just forgot to bring it in. If y'all want to see it, I'll be happy to try to go get it. Okay, Board of Elections. I think what we agreed to there is we're going to need some money for these um, um, DSS people that we're adding. What I would recommend there <laughs> is y'all remember we had we had money in there for the full amount, but we were going to get a state grant for 191 thousand. Well, that didn't come in. Y'all remember that bill didn't pass. So there's no need to put, the, to put that equipment in here. So I would recommend we cut both the 383000 I think it was, in expenses, but also the 191 in revenues we're showing. And the net effect is we'll save 191000 on this year's budget. And then when that bill passes next year or the year after, then we'll try to... Um, budget our half of it. There's no need to budget our half if they're not going to do the grant. That's true. So, now Dane did say, and this is something for y'all to think about, if he feels he can't go much longer on it, because remember he said the equipment's 12 years old. If you can't do that, he did say that typically what they do is you could buy the equipment and then when they do the, the bill, they may reimburse. I'm, I'm not real comfortable with that. You know, I I like to know the check is in hand and not rely on what the state may or may not do in that bill. 
Well, well I, I know that Dane would like to try to purchase and implement those and do all the testing right. with this year's election versus next year's. Right. Um, he, you know, he, he really doesn't want to implement a totally new voting equipment during a big election. Uh, a big election. Right. Uh, so that's well. Uh, then the then the option is instead of saving one hundred ninety one thousand, is to pay an additional one hundred ninety one thousand. Go ahead and do it, and then hope that the deal, that the state will have in that bill, which they've done in the past, to reimburse you. I, I'm about like you. I wouldn't trust that either. They said, well, you spent it. So, I mean, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, one time, somebody brought up the fact that the reason it wasn't passing this time is because some counties had already bought the equipment. Right. And they were the ones that were against it. Which so, sounds like they weren't getting a reimbursement. Right. And that's your point. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm a little leery about it. At the same I time, I don't want to hear. counties, too. Yeah. At the same time, I don't want to hamstring him. I mean, it sounds to me like the state is trying to get out of helping pay for them. See, I know in the past they've had them. They've called. They were called HAVA grants. H A V A. I don't know what that acronym is for, but they used to pay for. Because I went through this where I was before, and Craig, you may have, but um, and they would actually pay for it. But each time they threaten not to, and then they finally come around and do it. But apparently now they don't have the money. So it sounds like where they're trying to get to is basically push this off onto counties to buy the equipment. Well, I would ask you to do this, and that is reach out to Ron. The problem is the Sims cards. If he can find some way to guarantee to ensure that those SIM cards are going to last another year or two years. Yeah. Would be great. And so, if not, can he get replacements? That's right. Okay. All right. Can you make the uh, Russians are probably okay. outside of the Russians ought to have some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so are y'all where do we want to go with this? Do you want to cut the one ninety one? Let's get let's get an answer from Ryan. Okay. What are you doing? I, I yeah, let's get a little bit more information real fast. Problem three. Okay. When you survive, came up with a good of well, the acres, the them. Got a job. Here. Four we got I would just want to make sure. Here he is. He had to be a tire. He would be two. This was a base. Instead of air trunk. The hospital's name is all. So it's dated design. We bring systems in this frequency. All our radios. All do you for for all. Do you have it in there today? We need a strong. Our sentence. Well, sure. It will work. work. Then you using all the other. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, that was your David Jeff. Were you asking? Have two. And, and and the one thing about it is, once we get these, these are for the new ambulances. Once we do this, we should be set for a while because we'll just every time we surplus an ambulance, get a new one, go out it and move it to that ambulance. Are you saying the rest of them are already? Every is kind of. And because you have every year hundred may has it having a month. newest like the Jabine for the sake. Yeah. Definitely good on that. All right. Thing we've already yeah. managed one of the y'all. And the only other thing we had was this East Carolina dues, the value of memberships we heard now, but let us go do some research. I, I think we're gonna have to stay there with Peterson. That's right. And all those yeah. grants coming through that. I mean you gotta have somebody that to manage that and I can uh, tell you that the reason that I mentioned about the scene, when I, we have seen whether well stay in uh, Central Line, which is the cog of us, what came out of it for us is we got enough benefit from the senior center to cover our. The people I think have, are, it's a question for, frankly, is cities. Um, but the smaller cities get a benefit because these guys will do a lot of planning for them. You know, instead of having planning staff, but we have a very professional planning staff. Chip doesn't need any um, assistance on that, and we have GIS. Some places that sell on Eastern Carolina for that. So really, the way I was the project grants they hundreds, but I evaluate. So I have that for rating money. We
The bubble one. I had a scan. That was a strange name. Booking training. <clears throat> it was, it was, y'all remember? Now the uh, 1449 higher at uh, about We're keeping uh, everybody. Jan. And this was the part. No S. The fleet. Okay. Went up. But. We're, we're in verse uh, 36 a year. I had experience. I That's what it was. Out of the 50 dollars. It was all. We did. Right. Yeah. Of 20,000. Other people. Other people. Because we're going to be in time. But I think. Well, yes, or a dozen. 16,000. Had to do to. I was at this. Don't buy them through and all that. I'm just cool. Pretty much. This is an emergency. Unless there's an emergency. Well, how often do they have emergencies? Not that often. It just seems awful high to me, 16,000 in repairs. And during the summer, they do fill in control as well. <clears throat> how many school resource officers do we have? 11. 11 full-time folks. Full-time well, that's, you ought to look a little over $1,000 a vehicle. Well, that's kind of what I'm looking at. Well, again, these are not new vehicles. <coughs> if you have something to go wrong, what well, transmission? Yeah, air conditioning, stuff like yep. that. Also, I want to make sure I'm understanding this. Uh, basically. If I'm understanding, you're talking about in 1617 for 11 months, 451, $451,000. Right. Now, was that actually provided by our county department? Yeah. So we generated That's that revenue? That's what you did, right? Yes, sir. It's by each department. But, but that was paid from each department over to, to facilities. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Well, I suppose the $64,000 question is how much of the $451,000 did it cost us to provide that service? That's what I'd want to know. I'd want to know what the salaries, the benefits, and the cost of parts and everything else. How much did it cost us to provide that service? All right, well, let us go back and do that analysis. Do want to get back with two-thirds or three-fourths? Well, you, we were charging $48 an hour. That's the bulk of it, is the time. But hopefully that cost is $48 an hour. I think, I'm, I'm hoping it's less than that, because we got to pick up some money to offset operating the garage and everything. Um, I just what we charge here, kind of what the profit Well, was just so you all understand, we do a 20% markup on parts. And so we charge them 20% of markup on parts. We charge them $12 per quarter hour for labor. And that's basically it. And y'all recall we're going to, we want to go up to sixty. So with that, that's basically how we make our money. Is the bulk of it is labor and then on parts we get you know, we get a twenty percent margin on what it cost us. All right, that's fine. But I still need to know kind of what the profit was. Well, let us uh, let us go back. That's a different analysis. Let us go yeah, back I agree. that. Okay. Y'all Clear on that? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Joe, our people are not costing us forty. The thing, the thing, the thing you got to remember though is, is how you know there's hours and there's billable hours, and like if, you know a lot of times, um, one of the ways you can that you look at it is, is you make sure that these, as much as possible, are billable hours. And that's the same as a commercial garage does. Well, except for those who need additional information, did you need a vote today on all the others? Uh, I kind of like it because what I'd like to do is then we we could go ahead and have 
the ordinance ready. And then we're in a wait and see mode on when the state does their budget. Because that's really where we're at, right? Yeah. But you don't technically have to vote on it until then. But if I had some idea of what we could go ahead and make these changes, if that's what you want. But you are missing um, two members, so you may want to hold off. Which brings up the question, do y'all want to vote on it on the 20th? Or one of the things that struck me is all the indications we're getting is the state may very well finish their budget in June. But it may not be before June 20th. One thing we could do is wait and, and have a special meeting on June 30th. You could recess your next meeting on the 20th till a date and time certain on the 30th. And then we would do one of two things. If they've approved a budget and our stuff's taken care of, we just go with the regular budget. And we'd have that ordinance ready. If they haven't, then we would do the interim budget. I'm going to be out of town on the 30th. When are you leaving, Mark? Just as soon as he hits that hammer right there on the 20th. On the 20th. Okay. Well, then we'll go ahead on the 20th. But we'll, we'll just do, uh, we'll have an interim budget ready for you and we'll have the regular budget. If y'all give me an indication, if you can, uh, it seems like everybody's comfortable with what we've done here, is that right? And what I have is 20,000 add-on for the maintenance contracts on the E911 radios and um, pagers. We're gonna decrease everything by 83,000 because of that state appropriation we got this morning and we've got to add 59,000 for DSS positions correct right. and so that's an added cost there but the savings on the 83,000 is going to pretty well offset the 59 and the 20 it looks to me like we're break even was everybody good with those I so all they were waiting on was Brian to give us the information about the Sims. On the Sims. And, 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 and that won't be a negative. That shouldn't be negative yeah. news. That should be whether or not you want to take out 191,000. Unless we have to replace the whole <coughs> yeah. shooting match. So there were two things. I can't remember. I had down the Ryan get the Sims card information. Radio. It's a question of whether we're going to take that out or not. It's already in. We may take it out. Right. So that's a savings. That won't cost us any more. That would be a savings. But you're right. We need to we need to confirm that. I guess the point of making the rest and stuff, I don't know why we couldn't just go ahead and vote on it and put on those others too when we get ready to right. put the budget together. Okay. I don't see those as being make or break by Ray and me there. I may be wrong. What y'all think? Move with it. We move. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I have a a real problem here. I appreciate you for I should I should have showed that <laughs> in, but I did. That's the I have right up for I, the I've been rather vision. concerned about the cost at the library of upgrading their uh, uh, ad their address system as well as whatever they else they wanted to do in there. And I get this, and I'm just blown away by $26,384. And what they are proposing here is to absolutely turn this room over to uh, a company called Clark Powell that's going to charge $7,800 just to design it and manage the installation of it. We are building an unbelievable first-class uh, convention center and they basically are going to upfit this room to the same standards almost as what we're going to have out there uh, how many meeting rooms are we going to need in this county uh, I, I just I mean you got a 5100 luminums projector this is not a large room this really is a large room. $1,692 just for the projector. Uh, uh, 
uh, larger screen that drops down from the ceiling and just on. What I'd like to see is if you would, I'd like to see whether or not Ryan and our staff could do this work rather than subbing it out and spending $26,000. Okay. I think we can provide. You're saying cut it back. Oh, uh, well, I think we could. Just do the projection our staff screen go in there and put it. in a public address system, put in a drop down screen, and put in whatever size uh, that they would need and not not spend $26,000. Oh, that's, that's a very sophisticated type equipment. It, you know. it, it is, no doubt about it, but I'm going to tell you something. Staples sells them all day long, and they're about $700. <laughs> uh, 1692 dollars for a, a 5100 aluminums uh, projector is just a little bit much for that size room. Uh, and I had that same, the reason I brings to my attention is we ha I had that same objection when they wanted to put one over there at the Wayne Center. And I'm saying, you're spending how much? Do you remember that? <laughs> uh, we've got to find a way to use our resources and our personnel to provide these. That's why we have an IT department. So let's let's get a quote from Let's see whether or not he can do it. So that's three things. Yeah. There's three things. <laughs> I better shut up. <laughs> well, those guys are the same guys. Yeah, Ryan. Huh? Ryan does both of them. So. Oh, that's true. Thanks for sure. But I was just trying. I was just trying to get the other, the other part voted on. If we could get that and get a motion on the rest of it, that we're not talking about. It. I'm sorry. I was so wrapped up in that. What, what kind of motion did you need? Except for the three exceptions we just made, go ahead and vote on the rest of them. Go ahead and put them in the budget. Is that yeah. correct? Basically, you'd be voting on. Adding twenty thousand five sixty for the nine one one radio and uh, paging equipment uh, maintenance agreements, you would deduct eighty three thousand. Well, I guess the better way to say it is you would show eighty three thousand dollars of additional revenue coming in for the storage building. Okay, and you would add. An additional cost of fifty-nine thousand dollars for the four new. Well, it's actually the eleven new positions. The way we're handling that, and they would do. We'd actually, actually, you would show all eleven positions coming in. We would do seven of them through the contra accounts, and the net effect would be fifty-nine thousand dollars increase. What do you say? And excluding the three things with the radio at the hospital, Ryan. For the sense card in audio. Yeah, video. and the voting audio equipment video. and then the A V at the library. Those are the three things we're gonna look at. Mr. Chairman, I so moved. Okay. I'm glad you stated it so clearly. <laughs> I did not restate it. <laughs> All right, we got a motion on the floor. Is there more discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Okay. Very good. What else? I think that's it. I think it is too. And so basically, our plan going ahead is June 20th. We plan on voting on, and I need to have it both ways unless the legislature has right. adopted a budget. We know our two million is secure. Uh, and my, <clears throat> my understanding at this point is the amendment that was passed by the House in their budget. Uh, restored the four million dollars for this year and next year. However, we are still hoping to get the twenty-three thousand changed to seventeen thousand. Yeah. 17, what 000. John indicated was this: get, this gets them to the table. <coughs> this is a placeholder. It gets them to the table, and then they can get it fixed. And good. he he thinks he's got it ready to go. Good, 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 good. Joe, have you heard anything different? That was my understanding. Great. All right, does any more business come before the board today? Motion to adjourn. Motion. Okay. Got a motion on the floor. We're adjourned. Well, I got out of here before noon. We did that before. Is the meal guy here? Should be here. Are we going to eat here? Yeah, we are. Well, I didn't know. We didn't know. I didn't know.